first I want to uh, invite speakers of session number one. Session number one is called Aesthetics, Technology, Society and Cultural Industries. And I invite um, two people to um, turn on their videos. And those are Anna Aneta Janowska and Shintaro Miyazaki. And I introduce you quickly, um, Anna Aneta Janowska. She's a cultural economist and an assistant professor in the public policy chair at the Warsaw School of Economics. She is particularly interested in the cultural and creative industries, mainly the recording industry, and a lot of her research centers on the concept of free open culture in the era of digitalization. She's currently working as a researcher on the EU Horizon 2020 project, Ticerone, Creative Industries Cultural Economy Production Network. And then we have uh, Shintaro Miyazaki, joined the Department of Musicology and Media Studies within the Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences at Berlin, Humboldt University in October 2020, so very recent, as a junior professor in digital media and computation. He also works as a senior researcher at the Institute of Experimental Design and Media Cultures, part of the University of Applied Sciences and Arts in Northwestern Switzerland. His research currently focuses on the critique of capitalist designs of media technologies. And I invite you, Aneta, to take three minutes and I will have to cut you off after three minutes because we have nine speakers to go. <laughs> hey, no problem. So hi, uh, everybody. Hi again. Um, so uh, during the conference, uh, we are mainly talking about the creative process in music based on technology. However, from my perspective, music is not only about creation, but also about uh, the music consumption. And for that, uh, we have to bring music on the market and to reach the market. Uh, the artist and the music need several intermediaries that are responsible for the market parts of, of the whole activity. So um, we should be aware that music uh, in this context is not only a piece of art, kind of cultural artifact, uh, but also a marketable item. And of course, digitization has impacted the whole system, the whole music system uh, in a significant way. First of all, it has allowed the artist to develop uh, the creative process of, as we were discussing all, all day today. But second, it seems that it has freed the artist from quite a rigid system of music companies, uh, distributors, marketers, and the whole, the, the whole uh, big system uh, of the market, music market. Thanks to the disintermediation process using new global platforms, musicians can offer the music directly to their fans. They can establish closer relationship with the public. However, this freedom means also responsibility, means also knowledge and new skills. Uh, we may then uh, ask ourselves when we discuss uh, the, the education issues, if artists, musicians uh, in our case, are today really equipped with adequate knowledge and adequate skills to make best use of the new opportunities. And uh, as you said, I am a cultural economist, so I will bring a bit of an economic uh, market perspective uh, to our discussion uh, using uh, the concept of the value chain. Uh, so I will try to answer the question or maybe ask also or develop a bit uh, more uh, the question what has changed uh, for the musicians and what are the new challenges uh, on the musical market. Thank you. So now I um, pass a hand, hand over to Shintaro Miyazaki. Um, you have three minutes time. Okay, so also hello from my side. Um, I'm, I think uh, I'm coming a little bit from another direction, but it, I think we can meet in the middle somehow. Um, so my proposal is like, let us, I think um, and that's maybe the same. So let us not only look at new media technology of uh, sound production, as means of um, aesthetic expression and sensation, but also 
at the manifold ways of music distribution. So this is some, something we have common and as artistic and self-designed means of expression. So you design and you articulate, articulate not only you, your music, your instruments and your systems, but how it gets distributed and listened to. And I think there is uh, still a, a lot to, to do in that direction compared to what we saw as um, in, in the, in the uh, realm of uh, instrument making. So there is a lot of do it yourself and do it together movements. And this is also linked to very interesting pedagogical projects as um, Chicks on Speed, for example, showed. So this is in the making. So, uh, and I would like to see something similar happening also for distribution and community building technologies. Um, because here we have not so many dis uh, possibilities for artists to self-deterministically distribute their music in the way they want. Um, uh, for example, um, um, all these kind of systems are um, made by um, social media. So, and so the social media uh, are like um, companies who also have their own economic um, agenda and, um, um, and so on. So um, we need yes, also this kind you. of um, educators and connection with educators to think about that. Thank you very much, Shintaro. Um, this was uh, session one, short introduction, aesthetics, technology, society, and cultural industries. You also find in the chat um, a short summary about that and to choose. So I invite you now to turn off your video, Annette and Shintaro. And I invite to turn on video, Olga Kosmanitze and Krzysztof Chibulski. I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> yes, so um, these are our speakers for uh, session number two, Technology as Empowerment, the intersection between music, technology, and people. Olga Komanitze is a performer and sound artist. In 2016, she co-founded Sentire of Sentir which is a system engaging participatory performance and interactive sound. Sentire, please correct me if uh, I need to pronounce this differently. Sentire. Sentire, won a, hmm? Sentire. Sentire, thank you. Sentire won a special prize at the New Instruments for Music Therapy competition in 2019 and received funding from the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research. Olga also runs workshops for adults and children to express themselves through sound and movement. Appearances include Just Mad Art Fair in Madrid, Miami Art Basel, and Euphonia Festival in Berlin. And then we have Krzysztof Cibulski. He is a musician and sound artist combining analog, digital, acoustic, and mechanical elements in a post-digital approach to create interactive sound installations and instruments. He also is a co-founder of the New Media Art Collective Pan Generator in Warsaw. The Pan Generator project combines the digital with the physical world in its installations and has exhibited at festivals such as Art Electronica Festival, Athens Digital Arts Festival, WRO Media Art Biennale and the Warsaw Autumn Festival. And I pass now on to Olga for your three minutes introduction. Uh, thank you very much, Frederic. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to share my screen and to show you a couple of my slides uh, in order to support my absent presence. Um, so, uh, yes, today I would like to share my insights, my vision uh, on the current subjects of uh, how the empowerment uh, could be uh, implemented through this combination of technology and music. And then I was reflecting on my experience, uh, what I realized that the common thread there is, um, you know, when I engaged into the project having this intersection, I'm looking for a particular shift in perception. So something that uh, was also mentioned today before, something that would open totally new horizon. And uh, as a result of this process, uh, I'm motivated to uh, I'm motivated to uh, search for, and not like kind of you know superpower or 
uh, something like that, but more um, something to, uh, something familiar and maybe a bit forgotten, something that is already available and always there, even though we might not uh, uh, be always in touch with that. I mean, our senses um, and uh, the variety of experiences that we might have just within our bodies and uh, its mechanisms such as movement or vocalizing and so on. So today I will show um, how this kind of empowerment uh, works, uh, given an example of two of uh, projects. Um, first one is Sintiria. Uh, this is a system allowing to transform human interaction into sound. So all movements between two persons, as well as touch events being immediately translated into sound. And um, Another one is uh, my solo project, Self-Reversing, uh, which is also a practice in singing backwards. And I would like to, in both cases, highlight how I think uh, the empowerment uh, work works in this intersection between music, technology, and people. And um, reflecting on the current situation with all the restrictions that we have, and basically, you know, none of these projects can be realized or presented or experienced as uh, they were conceived, um, I would like to draw attention to the intersection, not only all the things that were just mentioned, but also inviting nature, uh, in particular plants, to become collaborators, co-authors, and so on. Because I really think it's vitally important, especially now, uh, to reconnect to this uh, uh, environment, which is kind of a bit um, missing, uh, or not a bit, hopefully. Um, and I think it's a really share, it's a really safe environment also for getting together uh, to sharing uh, experiences for listening music, for example. Wonderful. Thank you. I hand over to Shishtof. Yes, thank you. So as Frederica mentioned, I'm uh, wait, kind of... Wait a moment. Uh, ah, yeah. do, do you hear me already? Okay. Yes. So as Frederica no, mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of dividing my professional practice in two uh, legs, let's call it. So one is Punk Generator or Punk Generator, which is a new media art group I'm a founder of. And uh, we work together for more than 10 years now, and we are focused on let's call it like general purpose new media interactive installations but sound is a vital element of a large number of these installations we are making and we are rather focused on providing interesting uh, engaging experiences to let's call it a general public so we make it ac as accessible as possible and we also try to dive into the area of making um, controllers or instruments specifically for musicians, but this is yet to come so, as there is not much of it happening in Pan Generator Workshop. But also I'm making some stuff myself. I'm a musician, um, mostly jazz musician, so improvisation is an important thing for me. But I'm also I'm a maker mostly, and uh, right now it involves both using materials, tools, and, and you know, cutting your fingers and all that stuff, <laughs> as well as uh, soldering, electronics, uh, programming. So uh, all technologies that can help me create the project I'm interested in are taking into consideration, definitely. And I'm mostly focused on creating tools for musicians rather than like interact interactive tools, but I'm also pretty much interested in the process of creating music and how the instrument can be a part of an improvising team. So in, improvising with uh, digital instruments rather than only improvising with other people is also of interest for me. And also I have some experience with uh, teaching um, on different levels, both like grown up students as, and, and children as well. So the topic of how technology can be a bridge between a desire to create and the abilities, uh, depending on the age or, or other other uh, factors, is also of interest for me. So, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Shishtof. That sounds like an interesting combination of uh, empowerment and makerism, and uh, yeah, this was. 
the introduction to session number two, Technology as Empowerment, the intersection between music, technology, and people. You find information in the chat. Clara, maybe you post it again. Um, and then I invite you to turn off the video. Shishtof and Olga, thank you very much. And I invite Norbert Schnell and Pierre Khodlovsky to open their cameras. Very good, that's working very well. So Norbert Schnell is a professor of music design in the Faculty of Digital Media at Fort Wangen University. Prior to this, he was researcher in interactive digital audio processing and interaction design at IRCAM in Paris. He chaired the sixth international conference on new interfaces for musical expression and co-founded the web audio conference. His current work focuses on collective interactions based on mobile and web technologies in the context of art and music, collaborative digital media and pedagogy. And then we have Pierre Khodlovsky. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Um, he is a composer, performer and multimedia artist, as well as being artistic director of the Musica Electronica Nova Festival produced by the Philharmonic in Wrocław. He is also the co-artistic director of EOLE, Contemporary Music Center in Toulouse, and was also in charge of the Novellum Festival in Toulouse for many years. In addition, he has collaborated um, with artists and ensembles internationally and has had work commissioned by the IRCAM, Grame, the Academy of Arts in Berlin, and others. So I hand over to Norbert for a three-minute introduction. Yeah, hello. Great to be here. I would like to share my screen. I prepared some slides for this. Oops, where I am? Here I am. Um, uh, I would like to start with this. I, I drag this into presentations wherever I can. I just love the citation of Christopher Small, some of you may be familiar with. I will read it to you. The act of musicking, as of Christopher Small defines this in his book, Musicking, the Meanings of Performing and Listening. The act of musicking establishes in the place where it is happening a set of relationships, and it's in those relationships that the meaning of the act lies. They are to be found between people who are taking part in whatever capacity in the performance, and they stand for, uh, as a metaphor, for ideal relationships between person and person, between individual and society, and so on. So music making is a big metaphor of who we are and who we want to be. I would summarize this. And um, let me provocate a little bit by looking into some um, common music practices as I see them around me. So this is one I really love because it's, it's this beautiful metaphor of playing together, of a pluriality, a polyphony, deep diversity, and you know, it's just people being together, interacting with each other. Now there, are, uh, uh, there is some issues to this because um, you know the bad news is if you didn't know, this is all fake. It's all scripted, right? All these wonderful interactions of different voices, of uh, of different uh, timbres, and all this diversity is totally scripted. You know, there is interaction just according to the script. And the other is that we often put this guy there, and often it's a guy, who kind of reminds us that as soon as we are more than two, we need a leader, which is part of this uh, uh, cultural uh, thing there. Let's look into another musical practice that is quite common, you know, rock musicians playing on stage. I will insult people now, don't, um, I'm, I'm really sorry, but this is how I feel when I'm in such concerts. It's, it's really how I feel. So don't, you know, I don't want to um, compare musicians to mass murders, but in such concerts, the, only, my, the point I want to make is that clapping with a Radetzky marsh or being in a rock concert um, doing <laughs> is something that is really uncomf un uncomfortable for me. Um, here another practice um, that I like very much, which is a, a great musical practice, super expert musicians playing together on stage, which reminds me, you know, this could be a metaphor for, for they are superheroes, these musicians, like they have superpowers, they, they spend all their lives practicing their instruments, uh, and 
getting to the point where they have actually superpowers. So just, you know, uh, the question I ask myself is how all this actually relates to my life, to our life, to, to, to my idea how my life should be. Uh, you know, of course, a dream of harmony, of being in harmony with other voices. I dream to be a superhero, but my life looks more like this. You know, it's a chaotic meeting with other people, relating myself more or less profoundly to other people in, in their plurality. It's more kind of something like this, or, you know, in the best case, it looks like this. So these are the questions um, I, I want to discuss. What are the music practices um, that actually correspond to our lives? Do I have another 30 seconds? Rather not, because we still have so I start. three more speakers. <laughs> Yeah, you have more time than in the in the uh, several in the uh, session where you are into. And okay. thank you, Norbert. I will hand over now to Pierre. Wait a second until Norbert stops the screen sharing. Wonderful. Now you can speak, Pierre. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. So I am Pierre Jodlowski. Uh, this J is a little bit tricky to pronounce according from which side of the planet you are. If you are in France where I'm coming from, or in Poland, where I am currently now, uh, let's say, living and developing my activities. Uh, I'm very glad that I am sharing the room with Norbert, because a long time ago, we met in IRCAM, and uh, I used one of the objects that he was designing for the Max MSP program in order to create an installation that I wish to, to mention a little bit. But generally, um, let's say that I am really inside of the artistic process. And this is where I can, let's say, uh, participate and probably, uh, let's say, share with you some, some, some thoughts. And one of the acts that I wish to take today, it's really how the technology were in my case, but I can observe this also in a, quite a lot of young composers, uh, how those technology were enabling me to develop the question of staging. And this picture that Norbel was showing are, are really wonderful. And I would like on my side to, to share also my screen very quickly uh, and to show you, uh, oh Jesus, I have a lot of, yeah, to share <clears throat> yeah, a few, few things. It's just a, a catalog of a musician. I am the musician and this is a catalog of my works. And as you can see, I am really far away to consider the question of, of staging as, a, as something which would be rigid or something which would uh, forever be uh, forever and, and ever be static. Uh, so this is yeah, what I want to, to talk about, how the visions that, I, that came to me when I'm starting a process of composition are able to be realized and made towards the, the, the technology uh, and, and, and those processes that I can achieve with computers and sensors and light and using video and combining all of this uh, through my artistical vision. Thank you very much, Pierre. So this, um, so the inputs for session number three, participatory art, collaborative work and interdisciplinarity. Thank you very much, Norbert and Pierre, you can turn off your videos and I invite the um, speakers for session number four, new approaches to cultural education through music and technology. That's Marion Voyou, Helen Ley and Heinbach. Marion Voyou is an architect and designer. She's currently a PhD student at the Institute for Research and Coordination in Acoustics and Music, the IRCAM, the CRI, the Center for Research and Interdisciplinarity, and the Center for Research in, in Design. So very interdisciplinary. <laughs> All based in Paris. Her research projects focus on early childhood education at the intersection between design and science. She investigates the learning process through the development of tangible and digital instruments. And then we have Heinbach, uh, Heinbach is an electronic music composer and performer based in Berlin. Um, he uses experimental techniques to continually shift audio landscapes. 
His YouTube channel has allowed him to reach a wider audience and he has performed his music internationally at venues in the UK, Norway and the Netherlands, as well as in Germany. More recently, he has explored live concept performance collaborations and has also created live sculptures to make his music even more immersive. The third uh, input giver is Helen Lay. She is a creative technologist specializing in music technologies, craft-based electronics and education. She designs and makes musical instruments from interactive art installations to mainstream commercial products. She is a lecturer in London at the graduate and postgraduate level on physical computing, electronics, music technology and play. She is also the author of The Crafty Kids Guide to DIY Electronics and has written for Make, Hackspace Magazine and Hackaday. And I invite you, Marion, to start with your three-minute introduction. Hi, everyone. So I'm Marion. Thank you for the introduction, Frédérique. Uh, so I will share with you my slides. Um, OK, it's already the end. <laughs> so uh, what I'm doing for my PhD is actually exploring on body learning for early child education. And for that, I am uh, supervised by um, Frédéric Bébélacois, Joël Chevrier, and Gillian Graff. And uh, what I want to introduce here is that actually today um, um, young children are um, evolving and they are, they are growing up in a digital culture. And um, but sometimes the digital uh, tools are not adapted to young child's development. So um, the question I'm asking now is how to create digital instruments promoting embodied learning. Uh, so for that, for example, I have created with the IRCAM team uh, and especially Norbert, who is here also, um, the, the scenario of the interactive stories. Uh, and we developed together uh, an app called Como Education uh, for collaborative uh, motion in education. And uh, actually we are um, equipped uh, young children with smartphones, but that they, um, the smartphone are blocked with um, a black um, screen and uh, they can interact in motion. And um, uh, we actually record uh, some gesture uh, and sound before the, the, the story. And then we play the story with the children. So what I, I wanted to share with you today, maybe it's um, how we can uh, actually uh, uh, tell some stories in motion missing smartphone and, um, and also some uh, inputs. Uh, it's, it's that uh, we should maybe encourage more interdisciplinary collaborations, promote screenless and playful interaction with young children, support learning in motion, and create immersive and sound uh, environments to promote actually an, uh, an embodied experience for young children. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Marion. And then I pass over to Helen. Let's unmute myself. Let's start there. How about that? So hello, um, I'm Helen Lee and I'm a hardware hacker and a creative technologist. Um, I do a lot of stuff in the realm of music technologies um, and also craft-based electronics. So using traditional craft techniques um, to um, with, with um, experimental um, electronics um, as well, which is really fun. Um, I like to smush together play, creativity and technology in the name of education. I've been doing that my whole career. But when I say education, I don't just mean formal education. Something I'm particularly interested in is peer-to-peer -peer informal learning networks. Um, which I'll talk about um, a little later as well. So I use um, physical computing and electronics to design and make all sorts of uh, musical instruments from experimental things to commercial things. Um, one of my, um, so, so, so something you'd heard about in the last session um, is the Mimu glove. Um, um, for you heard from Adam Stark there from the team. Well, I was the lead designer on the Mini Moo glove, which was the children's offering. So, um, <laughs> Basically, it's the children's version of the Mi Moo Glove. So it's a stripped back, super cheap gesture controlled musical instrument that teaches children how to code and work with simple sensors to create music. Um, and as well as making instruments, I also write about them a lot. So communication is something that's very interesting to me. How, not just how we learn and make these things, but also how we communicate them to uh, reach more um, different diverse audiences. 
Um, so I have a regular column in Make Magazine, and I've also written like a whole bunch of books, um, including the Crafty Kids DIY electronics one um, that was mentioned earlier, but also um, I'm in the final stages of editing my newest book on DIY music technology. Um, so in my part of the session, um, I'd like to take a look at both the DIY and hacker cultures and how that influences um, music technologies. Um, so it'll basically how people around the world are using these technologies and these um, learning networks, the peer-to-peer -peer informal learning networks to make their own instruments. Um, I'm particularly interested in the um, enormously increasing accessibility of these new technologies. Um, just a, a decade ago, they would have been extremely difficult for most people to work with, but the cost of these technologies and also the information required to use them and the ease of use of these technologies is, um, tr is changing enormously. So it's a very exciting time to be involved in um, music hardware and um, DIY music hardware. Um, and I'm also wanting to share some of my favorite technologies that anyone can use um, with no code, no experience at all, um, to get started making your own instruments um, from, from classroom friendly technologies to like home studio tinkering. Um, finally, um, I'm also super interested in discussing the methods with which we share this learning and information, including the role that open source hardware and software has to play in this. Um, so yeah, I'm very, very much um, focused on skills based um, hack and um, like hardware hacking, new technologies and physical, the physical world of this is so sensors, electronics, blah, 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 which is a lot more simpler than it was um, back in the day <laughs> when I was learning it. So, so yeah, that's me. <laughs> Super interesting. Thank you, Helen. And I pass over to Heinbach. Hi, and I've got a big problem because I want to be in all of these rooms. I find everything horribly, <laughs> terribly exciting. And I really hope, I think there's a hangout later on after after this, after everybody talked in their own rooms. Yes, I really is. hope that uh, people stay around and uh, yeah, we can talk more and do even more like crossing of things. Because I've, I honestly, because my French uh, speaking days like in, were like th third to fourth grade. So I had to Google what actually this chat group means, so the group that I'm in now. But I find myself pretty well placed because I am a composer. I've worked interdisciplinary. I've done sound art and I have become something. Yeah, I've become a YouTuber in the past few years. I get emails that even call me an influencer, which I resent, but I have to accept. And, and during the pandemic, I basically became now a software developer and I put out three uh, plugins and an app and all of these have been luckily uh, tremendously successful. So the whole uh, terrible thing that happened and is uh, choking the arts, uh, yeah, I was able to cancel that by becoming a software developer. So I'm personally very interested in experimental music techniques. And that's one of the reasons why I started my YouTube channel to explore these and share these. And now I've started to apply everything that I've learned into instrument building. And I built instruments that are inspired by what Karl-Heinz Stockhausen did in the 50s and take the, took them to something I feel is new and modern. And I was inspired by tape looping because it enabled me to break free on what the music software that is available now usually dictates you, which is oftentimes, unless you go to Max and MSP and all that stuff, but in general, you make music in little Lego blocks and you build your sounds in all these colorful little things, but that's not how I experience music. So tape loops enabled me to free, be free from that. So the app that I entwickled, uh, that entwickled, the app that I designed, <laughs> together with Brambos and uh, that made looping free again and it doesn't work to the Lego blocks of music production. So that's basically something that I'm interested in to get creative tools in the hands of musicians and rediscover the past of experimental and avant-garde music techniques. And I'm looking forward to chatting about that. Wonderful. Thank you very much to Marion, Helen, and Heinbach um, for session number four, New Approaches to Cultural Education Through Music and Technology.